that it was okay. So I'm going to just share a little something with y'all uh, from the book of Chronicles. It's uh, chapter 14, and this is about King Asa. And for those of you who are not familiar with who King Asa was, he was the king of Judah. And uh, he started his reign really well. And um, there was peace in the kingdom. There had been peace for about 10 years in the kingdom when he became king. And that peace continued. Um, and it says here, it says, Asa did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, he removed the foreign, um, the foreign, I can't read it, altars. I have it underlined and it was, it was kind of marked there. Altars. And the high places smashed the sacred stones and cut down the Asherah poles. He commanded Judah to seek the Lord. Can you imagine if we had a government that commanded us to seek the Lord? Hey, election day's coming up. Remember that. Okay? Remember that. Uh, and so he commanded Judah to seek the Lord, the God of their fathers, and to obey the laws and his commands. He removed the high places and incense altars in every town in Judah. And the kingdom was at peace under him. Now, the kingdom's at peace, and look what he does. It says he built up the fortified cities of Judah since the land was at peace. And I want to challenge you guys. Right now, as Christians, we are still at peace. We can still worship here on Sunday morning together without fear of the doors being broke down and us being shut down. We need to fortify the cities while we're at peace. We need to fortify the cities. What are you doing in your homes to fortify your homes? Because no matter... We talked about this long the other day. It doesn't really matter what's going on in the White House. What's going on in your house? Amen. What's going on in your house? Fortify your homes. Okay? Teach your children. Teach your grandchildren. Teach their friends that come to visit. Fortify. We need to fortify. This is what Asa was doing at this time of peace. He was fortifying. We, this is no time to be lazy and enjoy. This is time to fortify. Okay? Um, so it goes on, and it, and it tells us that uh, after he's, he's fortified and he's building up, it says, the land is still ours because we have sought the Lord our God. We sought him, and he has given us rest on every side. So they built and they prospered. It says, Asa had an army of 300,000 men from Judah, equipped with large shields and spears, and 200,000, two, yeah, 280,000 from Benjamin armed with small shields and bows. Figured you could appreciate that, Brother Bill. Cowboy. Those of you who like to bow hunt, they had bows. Nothing's new under the sun, is it? Okay. All of these were brave fighting men. Then Zerah, the Cushite, marched out against them with a vast army. This is translated into the English for us, but it means thousands of thousands. There's, this is a million man army that's coming against Asa, and we just found out that he was much, much smaller. It says Asa went out to meet him, and they took up battle positions in the valley of Sephiroth's night. Not sure how to say that. Near Marishal. And I want you, this is the part that I want y'all to see. This is what Asa did. It says, Then Asa called to the Lord his God and said, Lord, there is no one like you to help the powerless against the mighty. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rely on you. And in your name, we have come against the vast army. O Lord, you are our God. Do not let man prevail against you. His childlike faith. His childlike faith. That he didn't go to his army commanders. He didn't say, ready the army. We're going to battle a million people. And we may not come out of this alive. He didn't do that. He got on his knees. Amen. And he said, God, we're your people. Don't let them destroy us because we're yours. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. That childlike faith. Where do you turn? When you see the million man army marching against you in your daily lives. We have some pretty huge battles that a lot of you are facing. I know I speak to you. You have huge battles that you're facing. It might look like a million men army coming at you. Are you seeking man to fix it? Are you getting on your knees like Asa? Are you having that childlike faith? Because you know where your strength comes from. That's the question.
question today. Are we relying on the government to keep our rights as Christians, to keep our families safe? Are we relying on, on the things of man? Maybe you're relying on your paycheck to get you through. Are you relying on money? Is that your safety net? Are you relying on your job? Are you relying on your friendships? Are you relying on God? I mean, we can learn so much from Asa here. He's fortifying his cities. He's fortifying his homes. And he's getting on his knees and he's crying out to the Lord. What would this church body look like if that's what we were doing in this community? If we were fortifying families in this area? If we were fortifying Waller County for the Lord? And if we were getting on our knees and we were asking him with that childlike faith to do, to win, to fight our battles for us and not relying on our own power. What would that look like? What would we look like? We wouldn't have our faces downcast, I'm sure of it. I'm sure that we would be marching in victory. When's the last time you held your head up high saying, I've won this? I am victorious. Don't y'all want to be victorious? Amen. We have to return to that childlike faith that Asa had. Now, unfortunately, Asa didn't keep that. Asa started out great. And I think, how many of you have been a Christian for, let's say, five years? Raise your hand. Show of hands. Five years. Ten years. Anybody? Fifteen? Twenty? Twenty-five? Thirty? Forty? How about, how about you don't even know it's been so long you've been walking with the Lord? Praise God. Praise God for that. Well, let me give you a warning from the life of Asa. He went on and things were just going great. But then another king, the king from the northern uh, kingdom of, of Israel, wanted to attack him. And instead of relying on that childlike faith, the first thing that he did when this next battle came was rely on his intellect. And he started thinking, okay, how can I make this work? What can I do? How can I fix it? And uh, he goes and he talks to this other king and says, hey, I want you to break your treaty with them, okay? Because then they're going to fight you and they're going to leave me alone. And that's what he did. And he went to the other king and he said, hey, would you do this? Because we can't fight him. He had just 30 years prior defeated a, a million man army. I mean, he devastated them where they had to, they had to retreat a million men. They had to retreat. But something happened to him. Don't start to rely on your intellect or your own strength. I think this is where we all fail. We start to think, we've got this. There's no safe time in your Christian walk where you can let your guard down. Don't ever let it down because the enemy will come in. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to come in and do that. And Asa ended up making this deal with his king. And they did fight another fight, but, but Asa was never the same. That, and in fact, the prophet came to him and told him, hey, you messed up. And what did he do? Let's see the depravity of Asa. What did Asa do when the, when, the, when the prophet of God came and said, hey, you lost your child like that? He threw him in jail. He threw the prophet of God in jail. How many of you have had a person come to you and give you a word in the name of the Lord and you rejected it? You didn't want to hear what the Lord had to say. In fact, if you could have, you would have put them in jail to keep them away from you because you didn't want to hear what they had to say. That's where Asa ended up. And so that's a warning to us here today to keep our childlike faith, to not get complacent, to not get comfortable in our walk with Christ and think that we've got it all together and start relying on ourselves. We have to always do what he did at the very first battle. We have to get on our knees. It's, it's recorded in just three, maybe four verses, his prayer. It doesn't have to be a long prayer. It just has to be from your heart. Your, your heart has to be in the right place with God. So I just want to encourage you today. Don't, don't lose that childlike faith. Don't lose it. Seek God. He will win the battle for you. We know. We've already read the end of the book. Amen? We read it. We know that we're victorious. So, I'll leave you with that childlike faith. There's a place where I find myself a
worship Him.